certified, certified real. Hey, I'm a little excited. You heard it here first. Certified real. Airborne. You are now listening to Real Talk Podcast. This is certified. Welcome back, good people. This is the Real Talk Podcast. This is your man Banks, and I'm back with the usual suspects. My man X, my man Gills, and my man Terrell. We're here to bring y'all an episode. Today, we're going to be talking about black sitcoms and the importance of them. So, without further ado, we're going to get right into it. We're going to jump right into this thing. My wife and kids. Okay. Um, I thought that was, that was huge. One of my um, favorites. Family Matters. Definitely one of my favorites. I don't want to take them all fresh. I'm about to say, don't cover them all. Yeah. Damn. Damn. <laughs> you take them all. Come on. Hey, what about you, Terrell? What you got? What you got? Oh, uh, the first one that came to mind was Everybody Hates Chris. That's oh, okay. easily one of my favorite black sitcoms. My Wife and Kids, again. Um, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just stick with those three. Those are like my probably my top three. What you got, X? I already know. I already know X first one. I already know the whole top. It's not it's even. It's just one. Fresh. Martin. Oh, Martin. oh, hey! I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I'm I fuck with the Fresh Prince. That was my sec. That's my second, obviously. Hey, I, thought that was I, felt, I think for me, Martin was funnier. Oh, yeah, for me. for me. Um, I you I definitely fall in the same uh demographic. Um right there with Martin and Fresh Prince being right there at the top. But um uh the parenthood was was a good one. That, that was that one that one that, that definitely underrated. So um family matters, you know, all those. So um rest different, in, rest a in, different rest world. Peace to the moms from uh parenthood, she just passed. So oh hey, mm. rest in peace, rest, rest in peace, rest in peace. Uh hey, first things first. <laughs> Rest in peace, Uncle Phil. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace, Uncle Phil. Pharrell. Always, always. James, James, every, definitely, definitely. Um, so, uh, what do you guys think makes a good black sitcom? What do you think makes a? What do you think separated these shows away from the rest? Of course, you've had shows that have only gotten a pilot. You've had shows that have gotten canceled mid season. What do you think se- makes a great uh, black sitcom? I think it has to be relatable and it has to be entertaining. So you got to have. Um, funny characters, you know, different things that go on in the household that you could be like, oh, oh, I, I've dealt with something similar to that. Or, you know, oh, that's just funny as hell. Like, for example, if you look at Everybody Hates Chris, the, the father, Julius, played by Terry Crews, is, is a penny pension type of dude. He's like, that's, that's 20 cent worth of bread you just stew in the garbage you know he's like the dad that just goes to work comes home he eating dinner or whatever and then rochelle is like i don't gotta do this my my dad got i mean my um my man got two jobs or whatever she used to say like it, it, it's just certain little things that carry throughout the seasons and throughout the episodes that the audience likes and they find funny so that's my take on it yeah. i think before we go um further we gotta kind of do some history um, go back to like to uh, definitely sitcoms that you know push the narrative forward. Um, okay. You know, like like you have um, uh, what is it called again? Um, Amos and the Andy Show. Um, you got to be able to you got to be able to talk about you know shows like that, and then shows that pioneered you know other shows like okay. In Living um, like um, In Living Color, um, you know different things like that. So I think that's important. And I think that's the blueprint that we do have, you know, Spencer Williams in a lot of, in a lot of places, in a lot of rooms, is kind of like the godfather of black cinema. So, in, so his, his ability to act, put films on, on, on TV that represent um, black people in the correct light on, you know, national television where everybody was, you know, it could be played in every household. So I think that's important. Um, but for me, I think, what makes a, a good black sitcom is representation, right? And and being able to mm. to portray the our true stories on 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 um on big networks, you know, like UPN, um, you know, WB, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's what the most important thing is: is that the representation is, is there because we don't get that representation in, in white sitcoms, and you know, our world has always been dominated by. I think one of the things is underrated. Not every black sitcom has to have this, but if you have an actual live studio audience, it, it makes the 
It makes everybody kind of feel, it makes uh, all the, the moments feel a little bit warmer. Not every cue is going to be, ooh, or ha, 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 or, you know, just, you know, those cues. That the, but, like, a lot of times in Martin, you can tell when it's real laughter and when it's just, like, a laugh track or mm -hmm. something like that. Or, like, Fresh Prince, the live studio audience, you can, you can feel it. When it's a moment that's like that's crazy like i can't believe that just happened i think that's one of the underrated things and of course um just a lot of things that we deal with in society that do not happen in other you know uh with other ethnicities you have to have that represented represented in the writing so it has to have it has to feel authentic i think uh if you have black writers in the writing room it's going to feel it's going to come across as authentic when you when you uh, show it on tv so yeah Question. Just to add some, oh, my fault. Now go ahead, go ahead. Um, just to add something, in, um, one thing that I, I always appreciated about um, our TV back then, Black sitcoms, is they always uh, took time, whoever was writing it, they always took time to shed light on um, ownership in, uh, in the Black community. I mean, you go from living single, from Khadija owning her own magazine, to Martin having his own show, to will being as ambitious as he was in his show to to a doctor and a, a doctor and a lawyer i believe in in, in other show uh, yeah and burn and then bernie mac um mm. being as big as he was i mean they they really showed they didn't just focus on the negative of the black community they 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 wanted to catch us at our best they wanted to to, to show us at our best and uh even small gestures as Will and Martin always having on the latest HBCU gear. Uh, even Khadija, I mean, uh, Queen Latifah and Living Single having, a, I mean, I know y'all remember them big ass Howard University um, the suits that Martin used to have on. Um, and, and it, it's just things like that, small things like that. Uh, I really appreciated. And um, I feel like we took for granted then, but now we're, we're realizing the importance of them. Well, my question was gonna, well, my question was gonna be because we talked, you know, representation, and I think um, our representation in black sitcoms was heavier um, in the '90s than it is like today, right? I also think we had more black sitcoms back then, especially with like Nickelodeon. For some reason, that comes that comes to mind. Um, Nickelodeon, a little bit of Disney comes to mind, but I, not necessarily in the '90s, but just in general. But like, I feel like um, in the '90s we had more better representation, and obviously, I don't know if there were more black writers um, for those particular shows, like The Martins, Fresh Princes, et cetera, et cetera, than there is in yeah. the black shows today. I'm assuming that there will be more black writers now, of course, but I do feel like positive representation. Um, was portrayed better in the ninth than it is now. And I think now we kind of make fun, we make more fun of our, like, our black traumas than we did in the nineties, right? It was like in the nineties, it was kind of something that we didn't really talk about. And we made jokes and have fun on other things. Like you said, more realistic things. Like we have doctors, we have lawyers, even though they still made sure that, you know, black people still go through these struggles. So we still have episodes on them. But I feel like today's TV shows you know, more, most recently in the last five years, 10 years, whatever, are more about um, the black traumas that we do have even, and less about, like you was talking about ownership or, you know, putting ourselves in this positive light. Like in the first one that comes to mind is like the last OG, right? Like I, I think I actually like the last OG with- um, I fuck with it, with you know, uh, Tracy Morgan. Yeah, with Tracy Morgan, but that's a big show that's just on you know, black trauma, like he's, he's a convict who had to sell drugs for whatever reason, you know, going through the jail system, um, trying to be a black dad, et cetera, et cetera. So, right, it's still a good show, but it's just based on those stereotypes and those, and that black trauma, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we have more, I feel like we have more shows like that now than we do back in the day, even with the Mike Epps TV show on, um, on Netflix. You know, it's about, you know, his, his parenting style, fam, you know, it still has the family as it, but it still brings in a lot of those stereotypes. So my question is, why do y'all think it's that? Like, why do y'all think it is like that? Like, yeah. wouldn't you think that we'd be more forward and not really focus on those traumas in 2021? So what are y'all thoughts on that? I think people today are desensitized to controversial topics like, you know, black trauma, 
like back then they they probably avoided the whole discussion because they thought it would be too much for entertainment, too much for TV. And then as the years, the years go on, you know, they just kind of got more comfortable with showing it and putting it in TV and film and just, just those platforms in general. And then on top of that, you have, you know, different production companies using that to their advantage to make more money seeing it as like a trend once they see that you know black trauma is successful they're just going to kind of ride that, that wave and keep producing the content i think um i think a lot of the um i think a lot more people are going to be able to read and react and research all these things that we see because we have more you know resources as far as the internet now like than we did before and as far as the early 90s things like that but I think you have a lot more black people inside of the writing room and now there's a lot more care to you know do these issues resonate with black people in the, in the you know in the black community as opposed to you know somebody just writing something throwing something at a wall and seeing if it sticks uh, not really caring you have black characters on the show but in the writing room it might be something different but now they're paying attention it wasn't like that for every show. Sure, you had shows like you know The Fresh Prince where they they really they really took care of that. And but you know uh, sometimes you know you have family matters where you know Steve is doing whatever nonsense and it's not really it's not really a black issue at this point. It's just you know it's just craziness thrown at the wall. So I think now it's just more people want more real stuff, and I think it works. I think I agree with uh, I agree with everybody, but I think Terrell said it said it kind of the best um, that made me think of it in a, in a different perspective as in, the, you know, everybody's desensitized. So this information that are uh, stories that everybody always wanted to tell, we're just in a place now where they can actually openly tell those stories. Anybody have like one of those uh, um, lesser known black sitcoms that, that doesn't get talked about that maybe resonated uh, with you? I mean, I could go. One- I feel like one on one doesn't really get talked about a lot. I feel like it was a good show and it, it just don't get talked about a lot. Uh, re- as far as resonation, just single black parent. I'm not a single black parent, but I was raised by one. Uh, I mean, everybody, I mean, I feel like even if you weren't raised by just one parent, you know a single black parent. Uh, so uh, just resonating that and the problems going that he was dealing with in that. So uh, that's just one that just popped into my mind. Um, uh, I mean, one one that came to mind for me was, um, you, know, you know, I was a kid. I, was, I thought it was like the greatest thing ever. It was like My Brother and Me. I don't know if anybody watched that. I, I, I might be a little more older than <laughs> No, yeah. I was. Okay, okay, okay. I've yeah, seen uh, it. My Brother and Me on Nickelodeon. It was the first time you've seen like a black show like on Nickelodeon like like that it was like you know it was more it was more like guts and you know just um cartoons and you know mm-hmm. Pete and Pete adventures of Pete and Pete but this is like my brother and me was like actual you know like telling the like, story of a black family and like from that perspective like not not really getting that from Nickelodeon that wasn't really their MO at the time so there wasn't any me but another one was like um uh hanging with Mr. Cooper I thought oh yes yeah um, um for me it, it, it was a it's two i have two off the top of the head and it was um smart guy and mm-hmm. the steve harvey show and mm-hmm. the only reason why those kind of resonated with me because of the times they came on where, when i was young i used to watch them and then we didn't really see a lot of like educational pushed in the black community um on on television right and then we never i i don't I think the first time I had a black teacher was like eighth grade or something like that. And it wasn't even, and I don't, and, and high school was the first time I, th- I believe I had a black teacher that was in like STEM or something like that. Right? So I think, I mean, STEM when it comes to like math science type stuff, like I always had or always knew about like, you know, a black teacher that was like a gym teacher or music or, you know, something like that. So I think that was the first time those two shows, just the fact that they was pushing you know, that it's the setting is he's really, really smart, educated. And then the next one, the setting is literally high school, right? So everything that goes on with that, 
from a teacher's perspective? I feel like amongst our community, I feel like we all know them. I feel like maybe yeah. they're not the most well-known shows to anybody else, but I feel like mm-hmm. we all know them because the one I, re- I feel like I relate to the most will probably be living single and just kind of like that, that not even necessarily that setting, but like what they were doing, you know, young black. I mean, everybody on that show, besides Overton being the janitor, being a maintenance man, everybody on that show was pretty damn successful. <laughs> like, so I think what Kyle and Maxine, they were both lawyers. Khadija owns her own magazine. Like, I, I feel like this just black people trying to be positive and move forward and be more than just the average. That's something I relate more because that's something I want to be. That's something I'm striving for. So if yeah, I related one, to anything, you'd be that. I think another oh, one no, was, the, was the Waynes too. Cause I feel like the mm. Waynes was a, I thought the Waynes yeah. was a dope show, but it just came like, it was in a time where we had so many dope shows and it was like the lesser of the dope shows. Right, so at, you know, Fresh Prince was still on. Martin is on. Live, in Living Single is on. Um, the Jamie Fox came on. I think later that later in those '90s, and then so we had all of these other really good shows going on. I feel like the Wayans kind of was like pushed under the rug. Of course, I don't, I don't know for sure because obviously, you know, I wasn't watching it when it was actually new episodes coming on. But just <laughs> yeah. watching reruns later on, you know just looking at it and, you know, picking what show I want to watch. I always fuck with the Wayans, you know what I'm saying? But just not as heavy as I fucked up with the other ones. And then when you look at the times, the, the, like the years they was on, you know, they all shared, you know, that same time. What's a black sitcom you guys wish they would have kept going like another season or two that ended too early in your opinion? Uh, I, I, when I was younger, I always hated that Martin ended, but then when I, of course, you figuring out what was going on and what was happening with with um, Dwayne Martin and being married to Tisha Campbell with Martin, all that. Of course, you figure out why it happened, and then you notice as an adult now, damn, these motherfuckers didn't do a scene together the whole last season. I'll say the um the Bernie Mac show, but that wasn't that was out of everyone's control because the reason why it ended was because he was sick. Yeah, and yeah, rest in peace. But um. Yeah, that was that was my choice. That would have been, yeah, that would have been dope. Yeah, Jamie Foxx show too. Jamie Foxx. Yeah, that's show what I was thinking. Good. That's what I was. Thinking. It was like never over the top. Like it was never no crazy seasons. But I always yeah. wanted to keep see that shit keep going. So I say the Jamie Foxx show as well. Yeah, I agree. I'm gonna say the Jamie Foxx show also. I'm gonna go Living Single. Then. Um, I thought I thought that that show didn't get enough justice. You see, you see the trajectory of a show like Friends, where literally the creator is telling you, like, I saw a show like Living Single, and I saw, oh, okay, let me make something like this, and then they move their time slot, they move Living Single's time slot to it, something that that didn't do them any justice, and the show ended up going off the air. And then Friends is this heralded show when clearly they got it, they got it from somewhere. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not strange. all that compared to something like Living Single, it's where it should have got at least a proper. Goodbye, but it just never, it just never. Um, just to let y'all fans know, this is how we feel about friends. That shit trash. <laughs> friends this is trash. trash. Yeah. It's funny though. Shout, shout out to Chandler. Used to shout watch that all the time. Friends? Oh, yeah, my cool. parents used to watch Friends all the time. Oh yeah. It just used to be on, like my my grandmother. It just used to be on the TV. Like nobody was like really like focusing in and paying attention, but it was always on. The show was like uh, the game or or girlfriends whatever where you have a show that resonates with black people like tremendously but you see when you when you go to the title cards the first thing that pops up is like executive produced by kelsey grammar who has a a huge uh huge uh you know influence as far as the creation of those shows yeah. all right what do you think of something like that that yes it, it feels like an authentic black show and yes it did resonate with a lot of people but you know i know you know sometimes you guys are not too fond of you know white creators of black entertainment like, I always how, do you, say, how do you feel about Kelsey Grammer I always say Kelsey Grammer did his homework that's the this all that's all I ever say I was like the man did his homework because if you watch girlfriends there for one he put he put four black women in a prominent position I mean even though all I mean Lynn didn't really have a great successful job but the main focus of the show is what Joan Joan is, is always the one that's on that's on she's a lawyer and um Tony, I'm like, they, they made her glorify gold digger, basically. So they have their problems, but at the same time, it was like, none of that shit was like, nah, this ain't believable. 
like all, all every pro, most of the problems they had was like okay yeah I could, I could i could actually see that shit happening i could actually see this going on so i always just when i go to stuff like that of course i would have i would have preferred a black creator but what i can say is kelsey Grammer did his homework from what i've seen but what are we, what are we saying though like are we saying he he wrote this stuff or did he just put his he, money he, behind he, it he was if you just put he, your he, money he, behind they, it they he said, said he, they said right it's all it's all it's all black writers he, he put his money yeah he just he just put his money behind this stuff i'm not i'm not okay, that's not so, yeah. that's not like his creation you know what i'm saying like he, he didn't sit down and think of like yo let me put four girls on national television he saw an opportunity to make and i'm assuming this you know, by looking, you know, um, I'm assuming, but I'm sure he saw an opportunity and, you know, he, money is green. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, and he put his money behind it and he backed it. I, th- I think it was a little bit more than just throwing money at a, a sort of situation and then watching it grow. I think Kelsey Grammer does have a track record as far as his creation of shows, like they, they become wildly successful. And like he, he has, the, he's at to a certain point at that time, he had like that Midas touch. Like he, that's what I'm. That's what I'm asking. Like, are we saying that he wrote these shows? He was instrumental in the. Oh, no, 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 I'm not no, saying no, he, he didn't write these shows. I, I, he didn't direct. I'm not he didn't like write. A Tyler Perry he didn't kind of thing. Write, in, in he didn't write or capacity. direct any of these shows, bro. He just executed. Matter of fact, let, of let me. Of these. Let me. Let me. Let me. I won't say he did his homework. I would say he put the proper people in position yeah. to make. Yeah, I was gonna say. I will say that. And for me, that's where that's where my credit ends, fam. For me, that's where it oh, is, yes, right? Like yes, yes, he, yes. he had that mindset of like, yo, I want to make good television or you know make money. I'm not gonna be that person that's like, nah, you're you're not the the, the person I want. You know that that looks like what I you know whatever the stereotype is supposed to be in this position. But my credit ends with that, right? Like I'm not gonna, and of course, because I don't know any more than that. But I'm not gonna sit there and say like he sat in a room and literally created this. He could have just read a script that had no faces and was like, yo, this is a dope script. Let's make it happen. And then the best actresses that showed up that day were two black women, you know? And then he said, well, we got to, you know, let's move forward with black women. And then he pushed it. But my, but that for me, that's where my credit is. I wouldn't be surprised if he was friends with one of the black writers at first and he had had an idea and he, you know, he brought it to him and then maybe the other writers brought in those other black writers that were on the show, that could have been how it happened. We, I mean, honestly, I don't know how it happened, but that that's a possibility. Because yeah. he's done yeah. a lot of TV shows. Like he's exactly, he produced an executive, yeah, produced a lot of TV shows and not all of them are girlfriends. You know what I'm saying? Or the game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's done a lot of TV shows that are, and those are probably his two most successful ones. Um, you know, off the top of my head. So we, uh, back in the past, we talked about um, the Wonder Years, right? A sitcom, a white sitcom. I'm sure we all are familiar with the Wonder Years. But they're coming out this year with a remake, reboot of the Wonder Years, but they're casting um, an all-Black family in the same time, um, in the t- same, t- same era, same 60s, same era. But instead of a white family, they're doing a Black family. Same style, narration. Um, you know, it's going through their family troubles and everything. Everything is the same, just with a black family. Now, I, we all know, I love it. I think it's a dope idea. I want to see it because I like to see stories that were played out. And I want to see how that story will be played out with a different demographic, a different, pe- different people, different actors, et cetera, et cetera. What are y'all thoughts on that? As we're talking about black sitcoms, and this is going to be a new black sitcom. And we talked about, you know, um, it's going to be in the 60s, so it got to be some sort of black trauma because you can't have a black family in the 60s and not touch on that. So what are y'all thoughts on that? Um, I'm just interested on the approach. Uh, I feel like I feel like it's de- the, the opportunity is there for them to kill it and knock it out of the damn park, but I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see because, like you said, this is the 1960s, so racism, black tra- everything is going to play a, a very interesting role in this, and from the looks of the show, they're living in a, a in a white dominated neighborhood from the looks of everything. So I'm I'm very interested to see uh, what's it, I, I my ideas and, are just wide open on it. And it's airing on ABC, mm. right? And so major Don network. Cheadle, and yeah. Don Cheadle's gonna be the narrator. And Don Cheadle's narrator. And they got Dulé Hill as the uh, the, the dad. Yeah, the dad. Right? Yep. Uh-huh. Dulé Hill. I, I rock with Dulé Hill. So. And I remember Dulé, seeing Dulé something not that the respect he deserves. Nah, it doesn't. It, and Dulé I'm seeing not. something that Fred Savage directed is directing too. 
I don't remember where I read that at, um, but I feel like I read that. Savage. Hold on, I'm up on it right now. I'm I'm looking at it right now. Hold on, I read it in some article. I don't remember where, but I remember he's doing some directing or he has some parts in the in the show, like in this remake. Like he he helped push this forward to get made, and he helped with the whole process and everything. Whether it was directing, producing, or something like that, I could. But I think it's dope that Don Cheadle is definitely um, narrating that um, that. And I think and, and and I think that is needed. Like a, a prominent big name black um name had to be attached yeah. for this for people to jump on it and be accepting of the idea. So I think that's actually a smart move um to put Don Cheeto on it. So for um for the for the people out there, if y'all ain't if y'all ain't been up on uh the Wonder Years, it this will be um this it it'll be just like uh Kevin did in the Wonder Years. It'll be a man recalling his him growing up, but uh, this would be a different spin, definitely with a black character growing up in 1960s Montgomery, Alabama. So we can definitely factor God, in race. Whoa, definitely factor in race. And Lee da- oh. and Lee Daniels is producing. Sir. Oh yeah, that's yeah. That, that's that's gonna be. I, I'm, I'm very interested to see how they gonna go with that. When and 20th September? 20th television. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I see you say September 20th see, television. 20th. September 22nd. September 22nd, 2021. On ABC. Yep. So, and I also think that's interesting too, right? Because we just sat here talking about streaming networks, and they could have easy. I'm sure they could have easily put all however many episodes, ten episodes, eight episodes, whatever, on Netflix or HBO Max or you know whatever system. And I think it's interesting. Not only did they go with ABC and did it with ABC, that ABC, so ABC also, have the rights. Did they have the rights? Originally? I mean, they probably do have the rights. They probably do have the rights at some point. But I know it's being. The production is 20th century, you know, Lee Daniels sure. entertainment, etc. Sure. Sure. How will how was it shot? Was it shot in like a sitcom y style? Single camera, yeah. uh, single camera yeah. from single camera, okay. Single camera. Yeah. Laugh track no night. And then from the they only have two step. I'm on IMDB, they only have uh two it would be stills. hard to do a laugh track to do the uh what you were saying live. The original was just like it was that was one of the things that made it stand up. The dramatic moments in the camera. Yeah. The same, it's just pure silence. But I think, I think, um, yeah, I, I like it. I, I, I can't wait for the show. And I never was a big fan of the original Wonder Years, but obviously, I'm familiar. I saw episodes and, sh- and whatever, but I wasn't a big fan. Original of Wonder it. Years was fire. Original yeah. Wonder Years. I think this is gonna be dope. I think this is gonna be dope. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. And plus, I mean, going in, I mean, dealing with everything we're dealing with. If you're gonna make a show at this day and age, if you're gonna make a show in 1960s Montgomery, Alabama, based around black people, you're definitely gonna have it. It's definitely gonna be uh, enticing. I'm definitely, I'm super interested to see how they're gonna spin this off because I did not know it was based in Montgomery, Alabama. I had no idea, so I'm it, anxious to see what they're gonna do. It's, I think it is like a complete reboot, though. Aren't they? Don't they got the same character names too? Uh, let me go back to the. No, no, no. They don't. Kevin. I think it's the same. It's everything's the same, but they did change the, the names because his name is Kevin in the in the film in the show, isn't it? Kevin Arnold. Yeah, and I think the Kevin new Arnold. one is it's like Dean or David or something like that. Yeah. That's dope, though. I like. I I, I always enjoy. I always like the idea of telling a story, you know, with a different face on it, because, you know, what we experienced in 1960s Alabama is going to be completely different than what a white family is going to experience in 1960 Alabama. And it could be the same base, same plot, but that story is still going to be uniquely different in ways. So that's why I like it. That's why I can't wait to see what, what they do. Right, so, so you know how the sitcoms like back in the day, well, maybe not so much now, but back in the day, they had a prominent, like just very distinctive intro, uh, catchy tune, like just like oh, to draw, yeah. draw you in. And there was a whole bunch of them. A lot of them were like some of the most catchy stuff that you can still hear. Yes, I already got mine in mind. I, I, I can answer this question right three. now. Yeah, top three. Top three? Yeah. Uh, Living Single, Martin, mm-hmm. and I'm going to say Moesha. It was between Moesha and Sister yeah. Sister for real because you know Sister Sister had that. Yeah, I, I had to say I had to say in that order. Yeah, yeah, in that order, just like that. So I I got uh in no order no no order Sister Sister, um Smart Guy, uh Martin Fresh Prince and then I would do Martin and um the Wayans. 
but the second one that they did, not the original, like the first one, that second mm-hmm. one that they did when they like did the remix on the shit. That one. Oh, I know what you saw. I know what that, 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 That's pretty much Tribe Called Quest. That's like a yeah. <laughs> like, like fucking... Those are the best ones yeah. to me. All right. Um, yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna say I feel like the Family Matters one was mm. catchy as hell for no underrated. reason. Underrated. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> underrated. Uh, number Did two would probably game? be yeah, yeah. Case <laughs> <Hey, Scoop. laughs> <laughs> All right, stop. Hey, he's OD. Stop. He's stop. OD. Stop. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Sit. Yo. Yo. Anywho, um, I would say, not you know I'm not even gonna put it in any order. Martin and Fresh Prince. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, first Prince, obviously, you know, you gotta, you gotta give credit where credit is due. Um, but Living Single, I thought was dope. An under, another underrated one, I thought, I it's an animated show, The Proud Family. Yeah, such a, it was like, it's such a good oh, song. It was yes, like, it was like, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was really good. Yeah. And I, I think, uh, I, I, honorable mention, I like, I like, uh, I, I like Family Matters as well. But I'm gonna go at, hang with Mr. Cooper. Is like, a, like, I thought it was dope. They all had dope. They had dope. Yeah, they're all oh, dope. damn. I forgot about the Martin remix one. You know, mm-hmm. I am. I'm yeah. the man. Yeah. That shit. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that yeah. shit. Hey, I forgot all about that shit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, all right. They were all hard right. on all of them. All right, so that, that's good. All right. Yeah. All right, people, that's all we got for the show today. As you as you know, we was here with the usual suspects, and that is our show on Black Tip Pop. So we out. Certified, certified real. Hey, I'm a little excited. You heard it here first. Certified real. Everybody. You are now listening to Real Talk Podcast. This is certified.